Hello everybody, James Canella, MD here, jamescanellarmd.com. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. I'm a cardiologist, I'm an electrophysiologist, I'm a heart rhythm specialist. Today I want to talk to you about ablation for atrial fibrillation. There's a lot of people out there who have atrial fibrillation, a lot of people who are scheduled for an ablation procedure. This is a procedure I perform. We pride ourselves on this procedure tremendously. It's exciting. We can do transformational things for our patients in terms of getting them back in normal rhythm, keeping them there. This improves energy. It improves well-being, allows recovery of heart function, reduces stroke risk. People feel better. They live longer, higher quality of life. We love atrial fibrillation. I want to talk to you about one of the downsides of having an ablation procedure, and that is fluoroscopy exposure. Notice what I'm wearing. This very colorful shirt that I'm wearing is a lead vest, and I have a leaded collar to protect my thyroid during my, my procedures, and this is because we use dynamic x-ray that is shining an x-ray beam through our patients to help us visualize our catheters in the hearts of the patient while we're doing our procedure. And this is the fluoroscopy system here. This is the receiving uh, chamber for the fluoroscopy which is shining through our patient's heart at certain times while we do our procedures. Being exposed to fluoroscopy can increase your risk of cancer. It increases my risk of cancer, brain cancer, cataracts. I'm doing everything that I can to minimize my exposure to the radiation that I am passing through my patient. Even during my cases, I will use these. Sorry, a little technical glitch there. We're getting right back on track. Bear with us. The quick trick is to be able to respond to emergencies quickly. But I use these leaded glasses during my cases to give my eye, there's lead in those glasses, to give my eyes extra protection so I don't de develop cataracts. There's also an increased risk of brain cancer if you do these procedures like I do. So I wear this leaded hat. This is five millimeters of lead. This is very solid lead protection and I'll have that on my head. We put our names on everything so that people don't um, wear our stuff. You know, it's the same reason for the colorful, colorful prints. If someone's wearing your stuff, you can recognize them very quickly and tell them to get out of your lead. So we're doing all this stuff to protect ourselves but requiring our patients to be exposed. I even use this leaded shield. Everyone uses one of these. This is leaded glass, and I'll put that between me and the patient to minimize my exposure. Because as that lead, as that radiation goes through the patient, the patient then scatters that lead around the room, and I get exposed to it. So very important that we minimize the dose of fluoroscopy that we deliver to our patients during our procedures. And I'll tell you what, the field has made tremendous advances in this area. Historically, even when I was training, it was not uncommon for a patient to be exposed to 60 minutes of fluoroscopy just so we could do their ablation procedure. We now use computerized mapping systems that allow us to visualize the heart and visualize our catheters so we don't have to use fluoroscopy. We have our fluoroscopy times down to under five minutes. Some programs have eliminated them entirely, and we're able to do that as well in certain cases. Five minutes of fluoroscopy is not a problem. If you have to accept that to get your AFib ablated, that's a good trade-off. So if you are going for an ablation procedure, ask your electrophysiologist how much fluoroscopy in minutes are you going to expose me to to accomplish this procedure. This is an index of how good the operator is. If it's a modern electrophysiologist, five minutes, maybe 10 minutes or less is all the fluoroscopy that's needed to give you an outstanding ablation. If someone tells you they're gonna need 30 or 60 minutes of fluoroscopy just to ablate your atrial fibrillation, Warning to you, my patients, they're old school, okay? And probably the techniques aren't that good and that modern in that lab. It is worth it for you to shop around and find a reputable program that will quote you low fluoro doses. There's no need to, for you to be exposed to radiation just to have an ablation for atrial fibrillation. There's no reason for us to increase your cancer risk just to cure your rhythm abnormality. So, 
going for an AFib ablation, congratulations. It's a great procedure. I wish you the best of success. We have phenomenal results. I know phenomenal results are happening across the country and around the world. Ask about the fluoroscopy dose. Don't expose yourself to excess radiation. Expect five minutes or less, maybe 10 minutes or less, that's no problem. The accumulative risk is very small. If someone quotes you 30 to 60 minutes, for me that's a red flag and I would be shopping around for another program. Ablation for atrial fibrillation, we love it. I hope it helps you. Feel free to contact us. I'd love to hear your feedback on Twitter, on Facebook, on my webpage. James Canell, MD. Have a great day.